All right, friends, welcome back to our Let's Play of Star Trek The Next Generation for the Genesis with your host, the Retro-ish Gaming Critic. Now, last time I took you on a little tour of, of the bridge. This time, we're going to start... Well, we're going to ignore the, the plot missions for just a little bit. What we're going to do is... First off, let's show you the con, how we're going to get from point A to point B in the first place. Just select it. Now, we are currently at Orion's Delta. We're orbiting the star. That's why in the main menu, the Orion's section is highlighted. And when you get into it, that's why it shows that icon around or in, in front of the star. That's our current position. Now, what we're going to do we're going, going to go to Orion's Gamma 3B. <clears throat> this is a mining colony, which will will have to come here later in the game. Well, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, to get here, we hit C to, to set our warp. Now, how fast you go only really affects how long it takes you to get there. That's it. On longer uh, journeys, there will be some minor damage to the engines if you set the speed at higher than 6.2 as it currently is, which we're going to do. As you can see, it does say safe or exceeded. There will just be minor damage in the in the engineering screen, which I showed you in the last video, but as long as you have resources allocated to the engines, you will be fine. That's it. So let's go. Now, sometimes on the, on the journey, well, here let's let's answer their com communication first. Sometimes on the journey, you will come across an enemy. For most of the game, the enemies will be Romulans. More often than not, they'll be content to just skulk away with a nicely phrased insult. In most communications, you have the you have have various options, and when confronting a potential enemy, you can take the the high road and basically let them off with a, a sternly worded warning, or you can do what we're gonna do and pick fights. I've always done that because, quite honestly, it's, it's more fun. The diplomatic route, while it does make more sense and is closer to the, the series, it's just not as fun. Nah. Anyway, okay, we're here at the mining colony, so we're going to go pick our away team. First off, we're going to want Jordy. I forget what button does what. Okay, now, it doesn't matter who else you have, but I like to bring along the bridge crew just for the heck of it. There you go. Now we're going to beam down. Now, who you have in the, in the top slot will be your party leader. Now when that, as you see on the, on the bottom of the screen, there are three icons. The emblem on the far left is the one with it, that, that, that's, that's highlighted in the red box. That is your command function, basically. Whoever you're controlling with that highlighted, as they walk near the other party members, they will get the other party members to follow them. As you can see, we have Riker following Jordy right now. We weren't close enough to Data or War. But we're going to do that right now. And that gets them in line. Shift select is B, okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I've played this. Now, 
tricorder. It's not really useful. The phaser, however, is. When we come back to this moon later on, we will be basically saving the miners. What we're here for right now is to find minerals. There are two types. I believe they are plentium and radium. Basically, they're yellow rocks and red rocks. We, if you, this is your first time playing through it, you won't know that that you need these. And this is the only place in the game to get them. Now, after you save the miners, the creatures that you save them from are still here. So having to get them, having to get the minerals later on is honestly a pain in, in the tuckus. It really is. Now, I've got Jordy in, in the lead, because as you can see just above his head there, there's that glowing bit on, on the wall. Only he can see that. If we, uh, let's see here. See, we just switch to wharf, and that spot goes away. We wouldn't know that it was there if we were him, or Riker, or even Data. Now to get that out, we... That's what we do. Okay. I thought we had to fire at it. I was wrong. Now that's yellow, so that is plentium. Now we're going to go through here, and this place is a maze. I always get lost. I have always gotten lost. Thankfully, it's somewhat, it's, if you need, if you get so lost, you have no idea where to go, you have no idea where you've been, so on and so forth, you can just beam out, beam back in, and you'll come in at that same starting place. Now here's a miner. Let's talk to him. Now, if you do do this the way I'm doing this, come in here first, remember where these miners are. They will be in the same spot, but you'll have to save them later. Yeah, this is not the most visually brilliant part of the game. Um... It's very well, well designed, it really is. It's a labyrinth without being too boring, which is honestly part of the frustrating part, because <laughs> it actually is not, well, it, it's, it's not the worst design level around. But, because it is so well designed, it's so easy to get lost. Everything looks the same without looking boring which is something I've always appreciated the heck out of, out of this game for. Yes, this level has frustrated me to no end numerous times, but at least it's interesting. The color palette is small, but you'd really expect that. I mean, it's, it's a mine, not a lush jungle forest. Now, what we're gonna do is when I'm going to pause here, off screen I'm going to gather all these minerals, so on and so forth, because quite honestly it's boring as heck. And hey, it leaves a little bit of mystery for one and we have to come back here later on. So next time I will have gathered all the minerals and we will go from there. Thank you for watching, see you next time.